In this session, we're going to have an anatomy lesson. The anatomy of a press release. And remember, apart from pseudo press releases, there are essentially two types. First of all, those aimed at members of the media, editors, bloggers, journalists, information portals. And our objective there is to get coverage. We want our press release to become the spur to a more comprehensive article quoted or used within a feature, or simply copied and pasted into a journal or blog. This type of press release is sent to individuals. It's all about focus. And secondly, those aimed at getting volume coverage across the web. No focus there, but the aim is to boost our search engine ranking. These are usually distributed for us by newswires like PR Newswire. Press releases for both categories look remarkably similar. In fact, they haven't changed much since the very first one. Journalists, editors and big-time bloggers feel comfortable with it. It gets to the point quickly. This is what it looks like. The grey panels represent text. At the top, the headline. Next, the dateline. An opening paragraph, followed by body paragraphs and at the bottom something known as boilerplate and then some contact details. Yet you can see why busy journalists and bloggers like it. It quickly gets to the point and contains all the essentials they need to decide things like will I take it from here? Is it a story? Will my readers find it compelling, informative, interesting? We all skim newspaper headlines, deciding which items we'll read and which ones we'll ignore. Will it be, Police have the strangler, or Details of Big Pony Contest announced? Editors and bloggers do just the same with press releases, and for that reason a headline is the single most important part of the release. The big mistake is trying to be sensational. What editors really want is a simple, single sentence that tells them instantly what it's about, why their readers would be interested, and who it's from. You can, by the way, add a subhead, you know, an extra headline, but that's really the purpose of the opening paragraph. This is an example of a good headline, aimed at editors of trade magazines specialising in employment and personnel. Latest figures show that labour market continues to generate jobs without triggering worries about inflation. Not sensational, but relevant. It's offering editors the very latest statistics and gives them a news angle around inflation. Here's another, this time from Udemy. Udemy targets international students with support for 10 foreign languages. And, and they've used a subhead. Online learning platform Udemy announced today that its site will support 10 foreign languages and hit the milestone of 1 million students. As for the dateline, it follows the headline and tells editors when and often where the release came from, usually the city followed by the state. By the way, when sending out your press release, make sure the subject line on your email is the same as your headline, never just press release. Opening and body paragraphs. The opening paragraph, sometimes called the lead, is a bit like a management summary. Just like the headline, it needs to capture attention and it also needs to develop interest. This is the section that editors and bloggers will skip read to decide whether to read on or whether to bin it. In Alice in Wonderland, the White Rabbit puts on his spectacles and asks, Where shall I begin, please, Your Majesty? Begin at the beginning, answered the King gravely, and go on till you come to the end, then stop. Well, a press release isn't like that. Instead of writing sequentially, we start with the most interesting material at the beginning, the opening paragraph. 
followed by the next most interesting and so on. As to length, keep paragraphs to five lines maximum. But when it comes to crafting the press release, I recommend you write the main body paragraphs first and then go back and write the opening paragraph afterwards. In fact, I suggest you do exactly the same with your headline. Write it after you've written the main part of the release. That helps to overcome writer's block, sitting for hours at a blank screen, unable to come up with a headline. Boilerplate. The boilerplate is just a short paragraph that tells editors a little more about the company or the individual who compile the release. It often includes any special credentials, any awards and so on. A few moments ago I showed you a press release headline from Udemy and this was their boilerplate. Udemy was founded in 2010 and has raised a total of 16 million dollars. Investors include inside venture partners, so on and so on. The boilerplate is not essential. While most very large companies assume that they're already well known, so they're happy to keep it to the end, smaller companies often prefer to add a very brief description in the opening paragraph. Usually did this uh, in a recent release, making it the second sentence in the opening para. Udemy is a well-known provider of massive open online courses, otherwise known as MOOCs. It offers videos and live lectures from hundreds of expert instructors, giving people opportunities to expand their knowledge base and skill sets. Contact. This is the final part of the release. Direct contact details for editors, bloggers and so on to find out more. And always, of course, include your company website as a live link. Some general points now. Press releases should be written in what's known as the third person. So, for example, it might say um, XYZ was the first company in America to whatever, but not we were the first company in America to. Only direct comments from company executives or customers, included in quotation marks, should ever use we or I. Bullets. If you use bullet points within your text, limit them to a total of three or four and use a single sentence per bullet. Press room. Uh, in the course, uh, I recommend that you include a dedicated press room or a newsroom section within your website, mainly to make you look like the big hitter you're going to become. And this is where journalists and bloggers, remember, can download the latest press releases, images, your logo and so on. But warning, do not post your latest press release as a web page, as, as, as HTML, within the newsroom. Make it a downloadable PDF. Why? Well, if Google happens to find the release on your own site before finding it on, say, a trade portal or a key blogger, it may very well ignore the trade portal as duplicate material you could lose any Google juice you might otherwise have gained. Photos. In another session in this uh, course, I talk about the sort of things that turn on editors and journalists. And one thing that really turns them on are, are photographs. Now for printed journals, you're going to need high resolution photographs, which by definition are large files. And the last thing you want to do is to be cluttering up the email system of a busy journalist. So I recommend that you simply send thumbnail pictures and a link to your press room so they can download them if they wish to use them. OK, those are all very general points uh, relating to both types of press release. Now, now let's look at Newswire releases. Newswire releases are all about search engine optimization, SEO. In our previous section, we examined keywords, or better still, key phrases. 
and they've two roles to play. First of all, a role to play in Google searches. Secondly, a role to play promoting your website. We learned how to use Google's keyword planner to select the best key phrases. But how on earth do we use them within our press release? The key things you need to be aware of are one, Include your most important key phrase within your headline, but it must make sense to humans. Remember, they're the ultimate audience. Two, avoid what's known as keyword stuffing. Overdoing the use of keywords to a point where the text reads unnaturally. Personally, I would stick to just a couple of search phrases. It needs to look natural. Three, Anchor text is where you use a key phrase that's also a hyperlink to the one on your web page, like this. I strongly recommend that you use no more than one anchor text in your release. And the web page it links to should have the same anchor phrase in its title and it should be used a couple more times within the rest of the page. Newswire companies will each have their own slight variations to the layout that I've described. PR Newswire have got an excellent guide to writing releases when using their services. And in your handout, I've given you a link. I also give you a link to a website that analyzes all the week's best press releases, complete with a critique. Check them out. It's the best way to learn. Okay. Everything we've just covered is repeated in your hard copy notes that follow this session. I've also included a tick list to make sure nothing slips between the cracks when you're doing your next press release. Good luck.